My name is Chris Harvey Clark. I'm a uh, marine naturalist and a veterinarian, and I also do research on uh, sharks, particularly cold water sharks. One of the fascinating things about sharks is that most people don't realize we have them up in cold northern waters. Everybody thinks sharks are entities that exist only in warm tropical waters. And one of the fascinating things about Pacific Northwest ecosystem is the fact that it's very nutrient rich. And with nutrients come fish and come sharks. And we have some of the largest species of sharks on the planet swimming in these waters. The fascinating thing about uh, the Pacific Northwest is around 14 common species of sharks, uh, rays, skates, and chimerids are found here. And of, of the species of, of sharks, the ones you're most likely to see as a diver would be the dogfish shark, a small shark, long-lived. And uh, the six-gill shark is actually also seen, not commonly, but in certain areas we certainly sight six-gills, and they're huge, so it's quite exciting to see a large three-meter-plus uh, predator swimming by you. And I would dare say if you were in uh, downtown Toronto and you had a, a three meter long predator cross your lawn, that'd be a pretty exciting moment. So it's a very exciting thing to see one of these beautiful giant sharks swim by. Amongst the chimerids, we see ratfish. And the ratfish are really intriguing, strange looking creatures. Uh, they have big buck teeth, big blunt nose, big dorsal spine, which is venomous. Uh, and they appear to be a primary food source for the six gill also flies on these sort of feeble looking little wings which allow it to fly around the bottom like a helicopter back up and move and highly maneuverable so a really interesting and enigmatic creature the ratfish well, one of the intriguing questions is how does the presence of six gills relate to the presence of ratfish it's apparent that six gills feed on ratfish based on stomach content analysis so one of the intriguing things is about the relationship of six gill sharks and ratfish is ratfish eat very low on the food chain they're eating mollusks and worms and things they find rooting around in the bottom with that strange looking nose of theirs in turn they're eaten by six gills and six gills eat up and down the food chain but really primarily feed on other fish so what we're seeing is nutrient cycling and the concentration of things like carbon and nitrogen up the food chain uh, from the uh, very low end of the food chain where the ratfish feeds right up through to the six gill who really is really a uh, primary uh, predator. So the six gill shark is not what you'd say extremely well known to science. There's a handful of papers on it and recently some very good research coming out of uh, Seattle and the NOAA group there. Um, really an interesting shark, cow shark because of the big bulky body huge mouth. Six gills have a very large mouth for their body size, you know, uh, not quite like a great white, but getting in there. Uh, they eat all kinds of things. They eat carrion, they eat fish, uh, they eat a uh, wide variety of foodstuffs which they can process, and they have quite generalized teeth to do that with, and a huge stomach, huge liver, um, probably quite long-lived. We don't know exactly how long-lived, but decades, uh, and this is common to sharks that live uh, in cold water. Cold water fishes, period, tend to grow slowly and mature slowly. One of the challenges with studying an animal like the six gill shark is how do you do it? And traditionally the way that uh, fishery scientists study sharks is that they catch them, they kill them, and they cut them up and they look at what's in their stomachs, they look at their reproductive status, they section their vertebrae and they look, how, look at how old the animals are. Um, six gills where they're sparsely abundant in many areas, if you studied them this way you, uh, you would have a hard time in British Columbia sustaining such a study. You'd basically wipe out your study population uh, trying to find out what was making it tick. So the question is, how do you study these animals without hurting them, uh, without affecting the population? Uh, it's very challenging, and actually it's a place where uh, sport divers and marine naturalists really shine because uh, we're down there underwater, we can film them, we can photograph them, we can get an idea of their size and their sex. And these are things that you can capture and then report. And in fact, there's a shark observation network website that's worldwide. You can go there and plot your findings. And this builds up a database very quickly uh, of very useful information. Now the way fishery scientists are starting to study these species, realizing the limitations of lethal sampling, is by putting tags on the sharks, and different types of tags, but these tags basically allow you to tell where the shark has gone and sometimes even what it's doing. So the water temperature, the depth, the movement, uh, in some cases uh, even the possibility of putting cameras on animals to see what they're doing while they're down there. All these are being explored. Until quite recently, the problem with all these big pelagic fish swimming around out there, tuna, sharks, 
We just didn't know where they went. And in the case of the six gill, just in the last year or two, uh, some amazing findings coming out of uh, Washington Fish and Game and the NOAA group, who've captured a large number of six gill sharks in Puget Sound, tagged them and released them. And it turns out that these are younger sharks and they travel all over the place. Some of the sharks that are tagged right off the aquarium in Seattle wind up coming up to Canada. They come up to the west coast of Vancouver Island, they travel up the Strait of Georgia, some of them even go up to Howe Sound. And in one case, an animal stayed away for two years, explored all around up there, and then two years later, almost to the day, was back where it started. So these animals are ocean wanderers, and we're only beginning to find out where they go. Uh, and the real interesting question is, why do they go there? So an intriguing question with how six gills and ratfish relate is, how do you start to take that question apart? And diver observation would be a great way to do this. When do we start seeing ratfish coming up into shallower water? We think they come in shore, perhaps for the laying of eggs, for instance. And are the six gills following them in and starting to show up? So do we see a pulse of ratfish and then a pulse of six gills arriving in the spring? And then when do they disappear? Uh, what's driving this? Is it water temperature? Uh, is it abundance of prey for the ratfish? Lots of questions to be answered, and you can parse this very well simply with diver observation. One of the most uh, amazing things about being a diver in the Pacific Northwest is these observations that you're making of six gill sharks and ratfish are extremely valuable data wise. You can go to the Shark Observation Network website and download a form that has all the critical things that you need to fill in. But at the ba basically, if you don't have that form in your hand, at least record the site, the time, the depth, the temperature, what you saw, and if you have any images of it, that as well, because from that we can tell things like relative size and sex, and this is all very valuable uh, information. And so many divers now are carrying uh, digital cameras or video cameras, and the data you can collect when you see these animals is immensely valuable. It's a snapshot. Uh, so if you're, gonna, if you're going to do this, try and get left side, right side, top, bottom, uh, and particularly the genital area so we can see what sex the animal is. If you can't, fine. If you can, all the better. And that information, again, can be made available through the Shark Observation Network. So the amazing thing about the Pacific Northwest are there are a number of locations where you can step offshore, you don't even need to take a boat, and you have a good chance of seeing a ratfish and occasionally as well a six scale shark. And there are also a number of uh, charter operators, charter boats, uh, dive lodges who can take you to see six skills. Some of these even participate in the shark observation network and are actively involved in uh, the science around this, these species as well.